Just have a look at this Cladney plate. It's a piece of metal with a speaker underneath and it's attached to an organ and I'm going to play a note. And just look how it produces this beautiful pattern. Clear, 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 nearly clear. So there's in the middle, it's clear along the edges it's clear and what it consists of is the plate itself which is a piece of metal which I cut from this computer case you can see it's a computer case that I just cut with an angle grinder this piece out of so it has to be a very smooth stiff piece of plate and when we press this lower F note watch you can see the patterns forming on the Cladney plate so if we were to take all the salt off and do it again you would see the same pattern develops I don't want to put so you can see that's fairly evenly spread on there. Now let's press that F again. And you see how it produces that beautiful star-like pattern because that's the, about the only note that that particular plate We go one note lower, nothing, nothing, nothing. So although it took me half a day to make it, I could make the same thing in probably half an hour. What I have here is a piece of elastic band that is just supporting some of the weight. It's glued to a bolt. The bolt goes through the plate. I drilled a hole through the plate. You could put a nut on the side, a nut on the bottom side, and then I glue the bolt to the speaker all we have to do is put some hot glue in the center i think and mount this gutter bolt as much in the center as possible so there's our gutter bolt we'll let the glue set so you can see the bolt glued to the speaker cone and that's all that it is then i've got a few pegs just to balance the um the plate that doesn't seem to stop the resonance of the plate and that would all be easy enough to make in about half an hour you know waves do this that that would be a wave and then the wave bounces back so it goes in that direction, then it bounces back, and then there's the node, and there are the anti-node. So as the wave is bouncing around in this plate, my my I'm feeling that at the nodes, you're getting where the wave is um, not bouncing the plate around. And the anti notes there it's clear of sand so that kind of makes sense that um, that's more or less what's happening and depending on your size of plate and your particular note each plate would have a certain note that it resonates more with cladney plates um, are ways of seeing where a standing wave where the nodes and anti nodes of the wave are as the wave bounces around in this plate it obviously this is the source of the wave and it bounces out and comes back or it goes in this direction and bounces around and comes back so you get a much more interesting pattern when you use a square because a square will have the wave going out like this hitting the corner and coming back it'll also have a shorter length that it's going and bouncing back if it was a circle you just get circular wave patterns i think
to also want to build on level. Let's try some fine salt. Going to use this electric sander with a piece of string attached to it and a rubber band at the end and I'm going to create a standing wave in this piece of string just like we create in a piece of metal. Did you notice how the string had nodes and anti-nodes just like the metal plate has. So the string had places where it was vibrating wildly, the antinodes, and it had places where the string was basically standing still. It was in a thin point and then it would spread out into a big antinode and then come back together into a node. So the string was forming a standing wave and the standing wave was forming a pattern. It looked like a pattern of something like a whole lot of sausages joined together. Standing waves are quite interesting because I think everybody knows that matter is made out of atoms and atoms are made out of a nucleus with electrons around them and the electrons are on the outside of the atom and they occupy a much larger space. The nucleus occupies almost no space, but the electrons carve out a piece of space for themselves. We call that the orbitals or energy levels. And the orbitals can have different shapes. Now they can have almost circular shapes, or they can have these dumbbell shapes, s orbitals and p orbitals we call them. And then some orbitals can have more complex shapes. And it's quite interesting how Using this Cladney plate, we on the CD could create almost like little circular orbitals out of the salt. Uh, you could see that with a CD, the salt would gather in circles like an S orbital. And then we saw with the string how you create almost like a P orbital shape. And then on the piece of metal, we created almost like this flower shape, like for dumbbell shapes. So it's so interesting that the best description of an electron is that it is a standing wave. The orbital and the electron form a standing wave. Basically it's energy and a little bit of matter. Electrons don't weigh very much or have much mass, but they occupy, they carve out this area of space. And so the electrons are whizzing around like that string vibrating. And when you touch the string, you feel like you're almost touching something solid, but you're actually just touching something that is very unsolid if you touch that uh, vibrating string. And yet that string is occupying a certain amount of space as it vibrates around its mean position. So when you touch your fingers together you're actually just touching the orbitals of you know atoms there's nothing solid there it's all just waves we are if atoms and electrons are standing waves and there's a huge theory that all particles are basically just waves the protons the neutrons and then all the nucleons all the smaller particles the gluons and muons the leptons the quarks the this and that they're all just waves. So it's like we live in the sea of 
waves and then we get standing waves that create particles and then the particles gather together and form like a human being amazing to think that a beautiful woman is just a whole lot of it, just a standing wave a beautiful shape made out of just a wave there's nothing solid to us we are like the atom just mostly empty space so things are not always quite what they seem and the more you get into um, atomic physics and uh, subatomic particles and all that stuff you'll see that obviously most of the uh, atom is just empty space and then it turns out that the electrons are basically just waves standing waves creating spaces and then all those um, particles gather together so it's a whole lot of standing waves gathering together and interacting and being connected by those four main cosmic forces the weak the strong and etc the electromagnetic gravitational forces etc and so this combination of waves and forces or whatever one wants to call it or just waves interacting that's what creates this whole wonderful world it's just amazingly thought out it's amazingly complex and uh, very hard to understand we thought we would have mastered and, and understood the theory of everything you know we would have thought that we'd have had a theory that unifies gravity with all the other forces by now einstein in the in the 1915 or so was devoted his life to trying to unify gravity with all the other forces, but he just couldn't do it and nobody's managed to do it it's amazing how even with a large hadron collider we can't we haven't really made that much progress and now they want to build an even bigger thing than the large hadron collider because they want to smash even more things more energetically together to try and figure out the structure of the universe and yet we've made remarkably little progress in science in the last 70 or so years 80 100 years this last um, 100 years is when you think back to those intellectual giants like uh, Einstein and Bohr and all those those guys Schrodinger um, and the amazing advances that occurred at the beginning of the 20th century the 1900s onward and then all of a sudden we just it just got too difficult and too complex and and too mysterious with with um you know quantum physics etc et so it's all very interesting it's a, i just found this experiment with the cladney plate and standing it's basically creating a standing wave in the plate and if you th want to think of it all all electrons uh, all atom shapes are basically just created by these standing waves of electrons now theology and science are, have something in common you see that science makes huge leaps when a certain person comes along you get an einstein come along and everything leaps forward and then you get a new person come along and propose something you know like um, quantum physics and yes god does play dice etc and so physics makes these leaps newton came along copernicus the world doesn't revolve around us we revolve the earth uh, revolves around the sun etc so there's these leaps in understanding and you could see that theology had got very stuck under the old covenant or the old testament if you read the whole old covenant or old testament you get this idea of a God who's Lord. He's Lord. He gives Israel commands. He tells them, don't break my commands. When they do, they go into captivity. When they do obey his commands, they blessed for a short while. But you're getting this impression. You're getting this idea of God being like a, a master, a Lord. And this Lord needs to be obeyed. And if he's not obeyed, things are going to go horribly wrong. That was the law was given under Moses, but grace and truth came through Christ. Now, when Christ comes along, instead of this concept of you've got this very touchy Lord, you, you get the idea, Christ introduces us to the concept of he's, yes, he's a Lord, but he's also a father. So Christ brings the loving nature of God into the New Testament. So we 
begin to understand how he's a father. He loves us. He gives us his son. Son dies for the sins of the world. He just wants to remove the sins. He wants to help you to keep his laws. Yes, he wants you to keep his laws. Yes, he wants you to be good. He wants you to live a righteous life and a holy life. But you're not getting this. Deuteronomy 28, kind of, these are the curses and the blessings. The blessings and the curses. You do this, you'll be cursed. You do that, you'll be blessed. Cursed, blessed. Israel's cursed, blessed. I mean, the history of Israel is horrible. If you take from the beginning of Adam, then mankind's banished from Eden for 1,400 years. Then there's a flood. It all sounds terrible. Then most of the earth doesn't know God. Then Abram, Isaac, Jacob come along. And then they go into captivity in Egypt for 400 years. And then they come out. And then that generation is killed in the wilderness. And then they occupy the land of Canaan. But then they the slaves of the Philistines and all the locals of the promised land. And then they get taken into captivity by the Assyrians and the Babylonians. And then they get under captivity of the Romans. And that's when Christ comes along. It's a real mess. It's horrible. It's terrible. It, you just get this impression that God is just angry with mankind but then christ comes along and says no the father loves us he, he cares for us and so we get through christ and the new testament this totally different picture of, of god as a loving caring father to whom we can come with all our problems and appeal yes he's still lord yes he still wants righteousness yes he must be obeyed yes he has a kingdom and he's a king and he is a sovereign and God is always Lord, but you begin to get this oh, much softer feeling of a God who cares, and you respond out of this feeling of love rather than fear and terror at going into captivity or being oppressed by your enemies or whatever. You get this, you just want to obey God because He loves you so, and you love Him so, and so. Wow, what a different feeling! It's the same God, but what a different feeling comes across uh, when Jesus reveals the Father in the New Testament. So Jesus was like an Einstein of theology or whatever you want to call it, a teacher who came and huge breakthrough in understanding about God the Father or the one Lord who is sovereign, whose will must be done and how he's actually such a loving God. And so we have that whole huge breakdown in the world, just uh, that whole breakthrough, should I say, in theology when Christ came and changed the whole perception that we have of God the Father to this loving Father rather than a, a revenge-filled um, Lord of the Old Testament. So lots of similarities there.